Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 22nd and the 29th of September 2018. So, still not much uh, fire in the sky, I mean Chiron is in Aries but it is going back into Pisces, retrograding into Pisces this week and we'll be talking a little bit about that. So, first of all, we have the vernal equinox uh, in the southern hemisphere coming up and the autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere coming up. That's going to be on the 22nd or the 23rd, depending where you are on the globe. And of course, um, astrologically, it's when the sun ingresses, moves into the sign of Libra. So, happy birthday, all you beautiful diplomatic Libras. I love everything about you, except the fact that you know that I love everything about you uh, and that you're so needy all the time. And yes, you, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. Um, and yes, your independence is an illusion. Illusion. <laughs> anyway, so when the sun moves into Libra, in the southern hemisphere, we prepare for the fruitfulness and for the blossoming of uh, uh, spring and summer. To this opening up of who we are and showing the world our sun and our rays, our light. And in the northern hemisphere, we gather in. We gather in psychologically and emotionally and many times financially. We bring in our grains and we stock up our uh, barns and we prepare for winter. This has always have been thought of as a great time to concentrate, to go inside, to visualize, to do a ceremony, to think about how you would look at these few months of autumn and winter or spring and summer, depending on where you are, in retrospective as a success. What would be the two or three key issues that if you were to be looking at your life in retrospective over that period of time, that these challenges or meeting with these challenges or just standing up to these challenges would be considered in your eyes or in your heart as a success. And take up these two or three challenges and face them in your life. Face them in your life. Now, yes, there should be a different ceremony for the autumnal and different ceremony for the vernal equinox. But you're here to Remember, you, you are the magicians, and you don't need me to tell you or to guide you. So, you could concentrate more on external energy if you are in the southern hemisphere, and more on internalizing that energy if you are in the northern hemisphere. Um, Mercury is moving into Libra as well on the 22nd, and we all become a little more diplomatic and fair in our dealings and we see the other side and the holistic picture of it all better. And, you know, sometimes it's harder for us to come to a decision. We're not as decisive when Mercury is in Libra. The 23rd itself is when Mercury is going to square Saturn exactly. Throughout these days, we can feel that square to Saturn and actually it's going to become a T-square on the 24th with, uh, I'm sorry, with the tw on the 24th, on the 25th with that full moon coming up. We're going to talk about it in a second. So uh, there's a square between Mercury and Saturn. The letter of the law, the small print, abiding to regulations, um, acting mature, maturely and um, responsibly, carrying the weight, 
making sure that what I say and how I interact with my surroundings can hold its ground and endure the tests of reality. That these things are feasible. That they are realistic. All of these subjects and these uh, tests can come up to the table right now. And we could be either judges of others or of ourselves over these matters who might not have been done in a correct enough way, in a Saturnian enough way, in a um, straightforward to the point as it should be done way. Um, or we could be the ones uh, who are judged by others at this time. And anger and harsh judgment could be an issue. And what I ask you to do through these days is, yes, see what needs to be amended. But once you do, be kind to yourself or to others and gentle in your guidance to perfection. Getting there is a road. It's not an on-off switch. Remember that. Every little step is a success. So, and sometimes it's a dance, you know. The 23rd is a little forgetful and is a little uh, tired with the energies in the sky. So if you feel a little lethargic um, or just introspective, accept it. Take it as a gift. Take it as a slower paced day and concentrate on satisfaction. That's not a bad thing. The 24th, Monday, communication through Sunday night and Monday morning. And remember, I'm talking in Central European time, so move it about 10 hours ahead Pacific time, about 10 hours before, and uh, I'm sorry, Pacific time, <coughs> uh, I'm talking about Australia, and uh, Pacific Coast time, I'm talking about the United States. So 10 hours before United States, 10 hours ahead Australia. Could be very active. That time could be very active with our thoughts, our words. We could speak a lot. A lot of conversations could be happening, a lot of understandings. It's a fast paced. And there could be a lot of expansive energy. Things can flow into our life. It's a great day to actually go out and enjoy yourself. Go out on a journey. Uh, go out vacationing. Go out to nature. Or be involved in anything concerning spirit or art or uh, your right mind and the muses. It's a good day for the expansion of your horizons and esoteric knowledge as well and studying. And then the 25th is the energetic peak of this month. And the days leading to it, we would feel that energetic buildup. And the 25th is a full moon and it's a dramatic full moon. You could see the chart. And I've uh, put in the planets that are involved in that drama. And we can see very clearly the T-square between Saturn, the full moon, and Mercury. And that's going to fuel everything I said before about Saturn and Mercury. Everything about the letter of the law and being exact and, and to the point and uh, adhering to the small letters and doing everything as it should be done according to the system. Um, can't cut any corners at this time. And if there are words or um, thoughts or ideas that are not well established and cannot hold their ground, they could be dismantled and harshly judged at this time. What are these days good for? They're good for overcoming obstacles that we've never overcame before. Georgie, you're having a feast on the roof, huh? Yes. You're really enjoying yourself. Uh, yeah, I always speak to cats in plural.
because they have nine lives. I thought it would be. Yeah, don't meow and be like this. Oh, so sweet. Yes, you're growing your winter coat. That means less shedding for me and a fluffier cat to cuddle. Anyway, back to astrology. So, this full moon is good for overcoming all kinds of obstacles that have stood in your way in the past. It's good for understanding protocols that have stopped you from achieving things you wanted to achieve before and overcoming that emotional self-destructive tendency or something that we have inside. And we all have these sore, dark, darkened spots that need some light, that need some consciousness. The 26th, um, if there's a day through this week that I would ask you to step away from yourself and your emotions and just see everything in perspective and be more logical and um, take things one step at a time, that's the day. It's a good day to take on responsibility. There's a danger of taking too much up upon my shoulders and actually creating an emotional tidal wave that could undermine stability throughout that day. But as I said, this is a day that if we need energy, to har if we need to harness our energy to overcome something, to make a change, to transform something in our lives, these are great days to do it. Chiron is digressing into Pisces uh, and it's a more sensitive time. It's a time in which emotionally we could be either um, harboring or, or cuddling our wounds or healing them. And it's a time for miracles, it's a time for spiritual healing it's a time for reconciliation with nature and with the world. And we'll be bringing it back home uh, when Chiron ingresses back into Aries later this year. But um, I think it's this year. I haven't actually looked when it ingresses back, but I think it's this year. And... It is a time to be more feminine. It is a time to listen in. It is a time to allow the feminine sacred energy to heal all of us when Chiron is in Pisces. Right, Georgia. Georgia agrees with me. You like to be healed by the sacred feminine energy. I know. Okay, the 27th, if there's a day that is good for business, Throughout this week, the 27 is it. Everything that is of the physical plane is good throughout that day. And it's a little bit unstable emotionally, so it's a great time to also ground yourself through, right, through the senses, Georgia. So either, uh, you know, we have five senses, so either cuddling a cat, touching somebody or something, uh, or uh, being touched. If it is listening to beautiful music, smelling good smells, um, eating good food, or drinking. And I'm not talking about alcohol, just, you know, utilizing the senses. Or dealing with money, food like cooking, uh, gardening, maintaining your house, or doing anything that is of maintenance to the physical is good throughout that day. And as I said, it's especially good for business and career. Um, and changes. Just afternoon time onwards, watch out from aggression, both your own and of other people around you. Uh, and don't be intolerant uh, throughout that time. On the 28th, it's a Friday. It's a very energetic evening or late night, I should say, Thursday the 27th, and we could feel it throughout Friday morning as well. Um, issues of relationships, satisfaction within relationships, 
self-value and self-esteem could be coming up to the table throughout that Friday. And basically, my suggestion is concentrate on your own value. Concentrate on what you have. Concentrate on yourself as an endless pool of um, talent and gifts that most of which are still undervalued and undiscovered, especially by you. And of course, there are other parts that need to be smoothed down. And you know what? The more you love yourself, I mean, not, I'm not talking about adoration, but the more there is healthy love for yourself and for what you do, the better you're able to utilize those gifts and talents and actually provide them to the world. And <clears throat> Saturday, the 29th, busy day for a Saturday. A lot of mental energy, left brain energy. Could be very interesting, wonderful conversations. We could be very talkative. It's great for studying, for bringing in information or disseminating information. But we should be aware that throughout Friday night and Saturday morning and throughout Saturday in general, we could have too much of a good thing we could overwhelm ourselves with indulgence. So just watch out for that. Um, that's about it for this week. And for groups, uh, studying with me from wherever you are around the world, for private consultations from wherever you are around the world, for any question you have about astrology, I would love to hear from you. And thank you for sharing this. Thank you for commenting and thank you for liking because it exposes these videos to more people. Have a beautiful week. Namaste and goodbye.